All right. So uh, to start with, uh, we were supposed to have uh, Toby, who has just joined us. Wonderful. OK, so we are on uh, schedule then. I would like to introduce our first speaker of this event. He is Oluwa Toby Shukumbi. He is speaking all the way from Nigeria. Let's have him on the screen quickly. Hi there. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I am under the impression that it's really early in the morning there right now. It is actually very early. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope you've had your cup of coffee. Uh, no, 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 no yet. <laughs> <Tell me after. laughs> OK, then you better get one. Anyway, so as a short introduction, Olu uh, Watobi is uh, a returning speaker. He has spoken on a previous virtual meetup as well, where he gave a, an amazing introduction to React Native as a technology. Uh, he loves to hike. He is the organizer and founder of uh, the React Native Nigeria meetup group. So he's one of the pack. <laughs> and uh, about, about the rest, uh, he is going to be talking about uh, setting up CI and CD in React. So I'm going to let uh, Toby take it away from here. Toby, why don't you take the world by surprise? All the best. Yeah. Uh, Toby, can you hear me? I think there's, there's some uh, network issue. Yep, there he is. Uh, all right, I guess we'll just wait for a second for him to come back. Uh, meanwhile, you should go check out his uh, Twitter. He is building a lot of brilliant stuff, and I think he's back. I think you're having some network issues. Yeah, I think so. Um, both yeah, we are. Right oh, yes, you're back. You're back. So uh, as I was saying, I was telling people to go check out your Twitter, because you're building a lot of brilliant stuff, and you're posting regular updates. and I believe you're recently uploading something on YouTube. You are creating some content that everybody should look forward to. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to push more content on React Native and basically React. <laughs> that, that is brilliant. I'll just uh, let you tell everybody about it. So the stage is all yours. Take it away and all sure, the best. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, just to show if you see my screen. OK, hey. I'll just be sure if everyone's seeing my screen. Um, so my name is Oluwato Bishokunbi. Um, I am based in Abuja, Nigeria, and I will be giving a talk um, titled to react, um, react Native CICD Setup. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I think you already covered everything. I'm a software engineer based here in Abuja, Nigeria, and currently also the founder of React Native um, Nigeria, which is basically coming to like this where we also try to host events such as this to talk about React Native and basically just get to know each other, um, one each other in the community and also grow the community. Um, I also do a lot of write-ups um, on Medium. I write a lot about React Native, about React, about Laravel, about tech in general. And I try to also make <clears throat> my um, content a little bit more explanatory. So. It's something where you really feel that someone is teaching you what you are supposed to do. And I do post a lot of content on YouTube, so I hope you do check that out. And I hope you subscribe, and I definitely hope you enjoy it. Um, so let's get right to our talk. So yeah, um, talking about setting up CICD in um, your React Native application. So let's go about go project beta and what you would naturally do is you would um, start up a new project you normally you would just run your normal mpx um react native in its and whatever your project name it's supposed to be um you would work on your project for both the ios and the android parts um you will build you will build a release version for your application and also you would then move forward to upload your builds to both stores most likely you will get a rejection from Apple Store. It is normal. <laughs> um, they will give you if they would give you some type of um review on what's wrong, you would fix it, and most likely you would get rejected for the second time. 
<laughs> um, I'm just messing around. I recently just uploaded an app and I got like a lot of rejections multiple times. But eventually you would fix all the bugs and then finally submit your uh, project to both stores. And just like that, you your project is live. You have all your users can go and check out what you did. And yeah, you, 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 you basically have your project live. But there is definitely a problem here and it's 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 normal there is a problem that you have a lot of issues moving forward in terms of pushing out new updates for your applications to your users um you have a lot of you would have a lot of issues when it comes to also testing because you are just running the application locally in your system and uploading it manually and last thing is if you're working on this project with a lot of people, um, say with the team, this type of method doesn't work out because it, it just works great if it's just one person working on the project. So it's, it does have a little bit of issues. And there is a ton of approach. So um, my my approach, the approach I will be talking about today is kind of using App Center to get a lot of things up and running. Um, basically trying to like get App Center to um handle most of the heavy lifting as regards testing analytics um building your project testing it it does have a lot of things going there i hope you all go check it out but let's 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 go forward so how you would usually do this is you would start up a new project with this new approach you would start up a new project uh, normally mpx tracking is in it name of your project it will download the codes onto your system and um, you would see the into that project and you are good to go. After that, you want to push your code to any version control. I'm using GitHub here. So you go to GitHub, you create a new repo. Um, when, create, when you create the new repo, you would just run the commands being provide, provided to you by GitHub and you would push your codes basically. After that is done, you would then head over to App Center and log in with your GitHub account. Um, you can't get to App Center if you just visit appcenter.ms. Um, once you are on App Center, you would see um, on your top right, on the top right corner, where you could add new apps. And there you could see a lot of um, um, you could see a lot of platforms that um, App Center currently supports. They do support a whole lot of <laughs> platforms. So you could not, it doesn't just work for only React Native, but for this, um, for the course of this talk, we will, we will be using React Native. So you just go over there and add a new app. Once you have added a new app, you would need to add an app twice because you, you would remember you are working for, you are building for the iOS and the Android side of things so you would create a new app and probably choose the, the os version for ios and the platforms to be react native you would do the same thing all over again and select android and the platform should be react native as you can see here um app center does sell it, um app center does um support a whole lot of platforms you can see java kotlin listed there you can see kodava you can see xamarin you can see um unity so they do support a lot of as well as react native but they do support um a good number of um, platforms so after you've done this you, you just add your app and basically you would see this dashboard just in front of you depending on the platform and once you see this dashboard you would want to build your app so you just do navigate to build on the left side of your project on the left side of this um, dashboard and once in build you can already see that you can pick your connect your um repo with any of these providers um they do support a lot of providers the funny thing is that app center does support a lot of things funny enough yeah so we, we will be going with github um once you go with github you can search for the repo that has your project for the sake of this project i named it react native ci cd setup this is a private repo but i'll probably make it public after this talk um when you select that you it basically just runs everything for you and you can see that it's you can select the branch you want to um have app center run the build each time you make a commit um i it's set to master so um that's the rep that's the branch listed there you just click on the branch 
and you will be asked if you want to configure this build. Um, you can't configure the build, and it's just normal. Straight, it's just all straightforward. Just a whole click, click um, kind of view. You can't see the app, um, project name. You can't fill all this up. Um, build frequently. You can't select how frequently you want to build. You want your project to build. Um, do you want to build this branch on every push? So do you want App Center to basically build your app for you every time you um, commit to this? When every time you commit to your branch, or do you want to manually choose when to run builds? You can't choose all that there because they have a whole ton of configurations. You can't select what you're looking for, how you want it, and but what I really want to talk about on in this section is the sign is the um, sign build section. Um, now, when you, if you want to sign for iOS, um, you would have to make a little bit of configuration on your code part side of things. So you would um, go, you would open your project in your on your Xcode, um, and you would try to disable auto sign in should be disabled. Um, then you would also select the correct provisioning profile. Um, if you don't have your um, um, developer license, I do wish you would basically need that for this because you have to download a provisioning profile from there and and your certificate and upload it over here. Um, after that is done, you will go over to the Android side of things. It is very similar, um, very, very similar. You would go over to the Android side of things and do the same thing over there. Um, go over to build. Um, and the same thing goes also for signing your Android side of things because you would want to build most of your signing on this device. So over here, you would, they would ask for your key store file which you can generate yourself and upload. Um, the option is there. Um, and just fill in all the necessary details for the key store file. Key store file you just uploaded, the key store password alias, or the key password. But if you already have this um, already set up manually, you could just click um, check the box up there. Uh, my gradual settings are entirely set to handle signing automatically. And after that, you are basically good to go and it will begin to run the build for you. Um, this takes quite a while. Um, sometimes it, yeah, it's, not, it's not really that long, but yeah, it, it will take a while to build as you can imagine. But sure enough, you will, it will build your app for you. And once it does build the app, it does send a notification to everyone on the testing team of this project. Remember, you could actually add as many um, emails you want to have um, as testers on App Center. It is very easy. Once you add them, each time there is a new um, build of your project, everyone on that project will be notified about this build. They will be sent a email. Um, they will be sent an email just like this, and they can download the new build and test it on their device. Um, one thing to note is if you don't sign the iOS um, app, I don't. You won't be able to run it on the device. <laughs> one thing to note, but you you should do that. So why is this good? Um, it's good because there's a better workflow. Um, the better workflow in the sense that it's 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 a whole lot easier in terms of moving forward. Um, when there's a new build, you don't have to go through all this process again. It's a little bit. Um, it's App Center handles this overhead for you. And of course, as developers, we want to focus on writing code. So we can now focus on that and have App Center handle um, this for us. But there is one more issue. We are building our application and sending it, sending updates to the, um, the, the testing team. But this doesn't solve our problems in terms of when we upload our project to the Playo App Store and how to pull in new updates for our code. And that is where this really cool thing on App Center comes in and it's called Code Push. Now what Code Push does is it basically um, bundles, in, it basically creates a new bundle of your project and uploads it, and uploads it to App Center server. And once that is done, each time it, you, you just have to build um, your your IPK, your APK or your IPA file once and send it to the store. And each time you, there's a new update of your, for your app, 
um, all users who have those apps on their phones will just basically check um, the server for new updates and pull the new bundle for that. So the workflow is kind of different here because you won't necessarily need to always submit new apps, except you make changes to the native side of things. But if you keep it, if you are making basic fix to the JavaScript side of things, um, you could just bundle that and push push that to the app center server and each your applications will basically just pull that code and it kind of makes the whole workflow kind of seamless. Um, setting up code push is really straightforward. Um, they did on the app center website on the docs, they did try, they did make a very good effort to explain how to set that up with different React Native versions. So it is pretty straightforward. What you would do is you would want to install um, the app center CLI globally on your machine. After that is done, um, you could follow the add the code push SDK to my app. There are a lot of um, straightforward instructions there on how to get that done. And once you are done, you would want to get these production keys because you would need them. And how you get your production keys is on the top right corner where you see the wrench, you just click on that and you would see your production keys. Um, once that is done and you are done setting up, you can run the command which says app center push release react a and this the the release and update command which is number four on this list is just down there you could just copy this and paste on your terminal and it will run a new it will um create a new bundle for your application send it to the app center server and run all that for you so it is pretty much straightforward and once that's done you would if you go to your code push um tab on your app center you would be able to see this release listed just over there and it is pretty much straightforward and um it is pretty much straightforward um this is a this this isn't new it is just a different way of um working as opposed to building your um building your app bundles manually and uploading them to the app store or play store um so yeah review so what what did we do um so what, what what did we do is what we did is we 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 did try to shift away from trying to do things a little bit uh, manually and try to have app center handle boots um building our apps notifying testers and signing for us and app center does a whole lot of things aside this it also has analytics so you could also check that out but for the sake of building your app and delivering it to your users, it does handle that very well. And setting that up is really kind of seamless um, with what I just showed. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening and any questions? Hi again. Hey. Uh, all all right. right, so uh, Toby, we have a few questions here for you. Uh, okay. from our viewers. Uh, John Francis is asking if we can use Fastlane for CI CD as well. And what do you think okay. about that? Okay. Um, well, funny enough, um, App Center does use Fastlane to a large degree um, under the hood. Um, so yeah, but you can run with Fastlane directly. It basically does what, it, it basically would do what you want it to do. Um, so yeah, you go for it, man. <laughs> you go for app fast lane or you go for <laughs> app center, whichever rocks your boat. <laughs> um, great. Ashwani also asked if app center is a part of the MS code push, but I guess you already answered that. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I guess that's done. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, uh, Toby, we, that's all the questions we have. Uh, oh. The talk was brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I just would like to tell you that I mean, it would be amazing if we could have you till the end of the session if that's not too much i mean i know it's really early morning definitely i will be at the end of the session <laughs> wonderful that's that's so great uh, yeah. anyway all right toby thank you so much for being here and we will see you towards oh, the end of the show thank you for having me it's always a pleasure being here oh it's always a pleasure to have you with us Cheers. take care bye